Japanese handsaws are becoming much more popular in, in woodworking and on job sites. There are several advantages to Japanese saws. They cut on the pull stroke and because steel is very good in tension they can be much thinner. And cutting on the pull stroke allows you to be much more accurate. When you're, when you're pushing the saw you can't see what's happening away from you and the saw could bend a little bit. Tension the saw stays straighter so they tend to be more accurate and you can see the cut better as it's developing. Uh, Japanese saws are, are very sharp and there's a number of different types. This uh, type here has a replaceable blade. These blades come out uh, and you can get finer and finer teeth for them. And this one we would use for finer joinery. A Ryoba saw like this has blades on both sides, teeth on both sides of the blade I should say, and this side is a cross cut saw, the teeth are sharpened at alternating angles and that's for cutting across the grain. It has a rip saw on this side with bigger teeth and that's for cutting along the grain. There's uh, three techniques I'd like to point out. One is starting the saw on your cut uh, body position and the way to hold the saw during the main part of the cut and then finishing the cut. So when I start the cut I'm going to set the saw to the waist side of the line. My goal here is to leave half of that pencil line and so I only want the teeth that are set to that side to be doing the cut. Now if I don't control that blade somehow the saw is going to want to jump around until I get my kerf started. So I'm going to use my thumb as a fence and I'm actually going to be pushing the saw against my thumb as I pull back. And that way I'll be able to keep the saw right on the line. And my thumb is up away from the teeth so there's no hazard there. And that way I'll be able to keep the saw right on the line. <laughs> Safety glasses. Once my kerf is well developed, I can take my hand away. My thumb was acting as a fence and I'll move both my hands back to the back of the, of the handle and now I can put more strength into the cut by pulling and follow the line and I want to again cut only lines that I can see and so the saw will be at 45 degrees so both these cuts will be developing at about the same rate. I've completed my cut all the way down this side and now I'm going to move around to the other side because I can't see this line here and I don't want to be cutting down that line if I can't see it. Now that that's done, I'm going to go around to the other side. And now to finish the cut, I'm, going to, I'm letting the weight of the saw do all the work here. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it other than pulling. And as I near the end of the cut, I'm going to catch this block to keep it from falling because it might want to split out. And I'm not going to push real hard down on the saw because that will also force it to split. I'm going to go very lightly, letting the saw do all the work. The kerfs are now guiding my saw square. I'll let the weight of the saw do all the work. And that's how you get a nice clean cut with a Japanese pull saw.